The biting wind howled across the frozen plains, carrying the scent of snow and the distant promise of mammoth. It was a world sculpted by ice, a canvas of stark beauty and brutal challenge, where every sunrise was a victory and every sunset a question mark. In this primordial landscape, under the vast, unblinking eye of an indifferent sky, lived the women of the Ice Age. They were not fragile creatures of myth, but formidable figures, their lives a testament to resilience, intelligence, and an intricate understanding of survival. And in this ceaseless struggle, perhaps none was more critical than the choices they made in love, in partnership, in the very fabric of their future. Forget the simplistic narratives of man the hunter, woman the gatherer. Archaeological revelations, the whispers from ancient bones and forgotten tools, are slowly painting a far richer, more equitable picture of Ice Age existence. Women, like their male counterparts, were not confined to a single prescribed role. They were innovators, artists, healers, and yes, often hunters, their endurance and keen observational skills as vital to the pursuit of game as male strength. The cold, unforgiving environment demanded flexibility and cooperation. A rigid division of labor would have been a death sentence. Every member of the small nomadic bands contributed to the collective survival, their skills overlapping and adapting to the relentless demands of the world around them. Consider Elara, a woman of the wolf clan, as her people called themselves, though no wolves were ever truly tamed, only observed, respected, and sometimes emulated. Elara was not the strongest nor the fastest, but her hands were deft, her mind sharp. She could track a reindeer through a blizzard by the almost imperceptible disturbance of snow, and her knowledge of edible roots and medicinal herbs was unparalleled. When it came to choosing a mate, the roaring displays of raw power, while perhaps superficially impressive, were rarely the sole or even primary determinant for women like Alara. For them, survival was a collective endeavor, and the qualities that fostered it were paramount. A man's ability to provide was undeniably important. The successful hunt brought warmth to the belly and hides for clothing. But just as crucial was his skill in flint napping, his patience in weaving snares, his knowledge of the migratory paths of the great herds. A man who could consistently bring back meat, yes, but also one who possessed the foresight to mend a torn tent, to recognize the subtle signs of a changing season to share his knowledge generously. These were the attributes that truly resonated. Beyond mere provision, the Ice Age woman, immersed in the intricate web of her community, sought a partner who would contribute to the harmony and continuity of the group. Kinship ties were the bedrock of their society. Inbreeding, a silent and insidious threat to small, isolated populations was instinctively or empirically understood as detrimental. Archaeological evidence suggests that sophisticated social networks existed, facilitating the exchange of mates between different groups. This wasn't merely a practical arrangement. It hinted at complex rituals, perhaps even embryonic forms of ceremony, designed to cement these crucial alliances. A man who respected these traditions, who honored the bonds between clans, would be valued. Imagine Bran, a suitor from a neighboring group, arriving with his small hunting party at Alara's encampment as the first snows began to fall. He was tall, his shoulders broad, and he carried a freshly killed arctic fox, a valuable addition to their dwindling stores. But it was not just the fox that caught Alara's eye. She watched how he moved, not with boastful swagger, but with quiet competence. She observed how he spoke to his companions, with an easy camaraderie and respect, not with dominance. Later, by the flickering light of the communal fire, she saw him patiently teaching a young boy, barely old enough to hold a spear, how to sharpen a stone tool, his deep voice calm and encouraging. These were the subtle cues the myriad small actions that spoke volumes about a man's character, 
The Ice Age woman was also a custodian of knowledge, a transmitter of skills, and a vital participant in the raising of the next generation. Therefore, a prospective mate's capacity for cooperation and his willingness to invest in the well-being of the family unit, broadly defined, were paramount. The harsh realities of their worlds meant that childhood was a perilous journey. An infant, a toddler, a growing child. Each required immense care, protection, and patient instruction. A man who showed kindness to children, who shared the burden of their upbringing, who possessed a gentle hand when needed, was a prize beyond measure. Perhaps, too, there was an appreciation for attributes that transcended the purely pragmatic. The intricate cave paintings, the carved figurines, the adorned burial sites, these speak to a rich inner life, a capacity for symbolic thought, and a profound connection to the spiritual realm. Could it be that a man's artistic talent, his storytelling prowess, his understanding of the ancestral spirits also played a role in attracting a mate? A man who could carve a bone flute that sang with the wind or recount tales of ancient hunts that captivated the firelit circle might have been perceived as possessing a deeper intelligence, a sensitivity that spoke to shared humanity amidst the savagery of their existence. Consider the notion of good genes, a concept explored by evolutionary biologists even in modern human mate selection. While not articulated in scientific terms, Ice Age women would have instinctively sought partners who displayed signs of health, resilience, and adaptability. A strong, straight physique, clear eyes, an absence of debilitating injuries, the quickness of mind to outsmart prey or predator, these were outward manifestations of genetic fitness. But it wasn't just physical prowess. A man who could recover quickly from illness, who seemed less susceptible to the pervasive coughs and fevers that plagued their communities, would suggest a robust immune system, a valuable legacy to pass on to offspring. The longevity of a partnership was not merely about individual happiness. It was a matter of collective survival. A stable pair bond, particularly one where both partners were skilled and adaptable, strengthened the entire group. It ensured the continuity of shared knowledge, the effective division of labor, and a consistent source of support in a world that offered little room for error. The decision of who to take as a mate, then, was not a fleeting impulse but a deeply considered calculation, often made with the implicit understanding that this choice would echo through the generations. This interwoven tapestry of practical skills, social cohesion, and perhaps even aesthetic appreciation formed the basis of selection. But it wasn't always a purely rational calculus. Even in the depths of the Ice Age, the inexplicable pull of attraction the mysterious chemistry between two individuals surely played its part. It might not have been the romantic idealization we understand today, but a primal recognition of connection, a feeling of ease and shared purpose that transcended the purely functional. Perhaps it was the way a man's laughter echoed through the cave, dispelling the ever-present shadows or the quiet strength in his gaze as he faced a blizzard. These subtle nuances, though difficult to quantify, must have resonated deeply. Consider the role of trust. In a world where betrayal could mean death, a partner's trustworthiness was paramount. A man who honored his word, who shared resources equitably, who could be relied upon in a crisis. These were invaluable traits. This trust extended beyond the individual to the wider group. A man whose family or clan was known for its integrity and strong reciprocal relationships would be viewed more favorably. Intergroup conflict was a constant threat, and alliances forged through marriage were crucial for survival and resource access. Therefore, a man who could foster peace and cooperation, who was skilled in diplomacy within and outside his immediate kin, possessed a subtle but potent appeal. The physical demands on Ice Age women were immense. Childbearing, often in harsh conditions, was a perilous journey. 
The successful rearing of children to adulthood was a monumental task requiring years of sustained effort and vigilance. Therefore, a prospective mate's willingness to share the burden of childcare would have been a significant factor. While the concept of a provider often conjures images of the male hunter, it's crucial to remember that women also provided through gathering, crafting, and processing food. The successful Ice Age partnership was a symbiotic relationship where each contributed according to their strengths and critically supported the other's efforts, particularly in the arduous task of raising offspring. Stories passed down through generations, etched into the collective memory of the clans, would have reinforced these values. The tales of courageous hunters, yes, but also of wise elders, compassionate healers, and resourceful builders. These narratives would have shaped the aspirations and expectations of young women like Alara, influencing their perceptions of what constituted a desirable partner. A man who embodied these ancestral virtues, who demonstrated respect for the traditions and wisdom of his forebears, would be seen as a worthy link in the continuous chain of their people. The pressures of survival meant that adaptability was a cherished trait. The Ice Age was not static. Glaciers advanced and retreated, animal migration patterns shifted, and new challenges emerged constantly. A man who was resourceful, who could devise new hunting techniques, who was open to learning and innovation, would be a valuable asset in an ever-changing world. This wasn't about brute force, but about ingenuity, the ability to think creatively under pressure, to find solutions where none seemed apparent. Furthermore, the health and vitality of the community itself would have played a role. A man who contributed positively to the group's well-being, whether through his skills, his temperament, or his leadership, would naturally be more attractive. This might manifest in his ability to mediate disputes, to boost morale during lean times, or to simply bring a sense of calm stability to the group. Such a man would be seen not just as a potential partner for an individual woman, but as a beneficial presence for her entire kin group. The decision was, in essence, a profound act of forethought. It was not just about the present moment, but about the long winter ahead, about the children who would be born, about the continuity of the clan. It was a choice rooted in the deepest instincts of survival, tempered by the nascent complexities of human social interaction and the budding understanding of their place in the vast, indifferent landscape. The silent symphony of Sapa, the whispered wisdom of the ancients, all echoed this fundamental truth. In the heart of the Ice Age, love was not a luxury, but a strategy for survival a choice made with the future held firmly in hand. In the flickering shadows cast by the cave fire, as the wind howled its ancient song outside, the women of the Ice Age made choices that shaped not only their own destinies, but the very trajectory of humanity. Their decisions about who to love, who to bond with, were not dictated by frivolous whims or fleeting infatuation, but by an acute understanding of what was required for survival and propagation in an unforgiving world. These were women who bore the heavy mantle of creation and continuation, and their mate selection was a profound act of strategic foresight. Consider the societal structures that underpinned these choices. Small, nomadic bands, often numbering no more than a few dozen individuals, relied on intricate social cohesion. Everyone had a role, and every relationship was a thread in the delicate tapestry of their survival. For a woman, choosing a mate was also, in many ways, choosing a family, choosing an alliance, choosing the future of her lineage within the broader clan. It was a decision that would impact her access to resources, the safety of her children, and her own standing within the community. The concept of reciprocity would have been deeply ingrained, a man who was generous with his successful hunts, who shared knowledge freely, who contributed equitably to communal tasks. He embodied the spirit of reciprocity that was essential for group flourishing. Selfishness or greed, even if manifesting as individual strength, would likely have been viewed with suspicion. 
as such traits could undermine the collective good and ultimately threaten everyone's survival. Alara would have instinctively watched not just how Bran hunted, but how he divided his kill, how he interacted with the less fortunate, how he responded to requests for help. These were the true measures of a man's worth. Beyond the purely practical, there was likely an appreciation for traits that fostered a sense of security and belonging. In a world fraught with danger from predators, harsh weather, and rival groups, a partner who offered emotional stability and a sense of calm would have been invaluable. Someone who was not prone to sudden rages, who could maintain composure in the face of adversity, who offered quiet reassurance, these were the subtle yet powerful anchors in a turbulent existence. The emotional intelligence, the capacity for empathy, would have been as vital as physical prowess. The Ice Age woman was also a keen observer of patterns, in the stars, in the movements of animals, in the cycles of nature. This acute, observational skill would have extended to human behavior. She would have assessed a potential mate's consistency and reliability. Was he dependable in times of need? Did his actions align with his words? Was he consistent in his treatment of others? In a world without written laws or formal contracts, a person's character, as demonstrated through consistent behavior, was their true currency. Moreover, the transmission of knowledge was critical for survival. A man who possessed a wealth of practical information, where to find the best flint, how to navigate by the stars, the best places to fish in different seasons, would have been highly desirable. This knowledge wasn't just for his own use, it was a resource to be shared, to be passed on to his children and to the wider community. Thus, intelligence in its broadest sense, encompassing practical know-how, problem-solving abilities, and the capacity for learning would have been a prized attribute. The very landscape shaped their choices. The vast, sweeping tundra and icy plains demanded endurance, not just in hunting, but in traversing long distances during nomadic movements. A partner who possessed strong physical stamina and the ability to withstand extreme conditions, not just for a single hunt, but for sustained periods, would have been highly valued. This endurance was a testament to his genetic robustness and his capacity to contribute consistently to the group's arduous way of life. Ultimately, the choice of a mate for an Ice Age woman was a complex interplay of practicality, social intelligence, emotional resonance, and a deep, intuitive understanding of what it took to survive and thrive. It was a selection process forged in the crucible of necessity, where every decision carried significant weight. There was no room for error, no luxury of triviality. The silent landscapes witnessed countless such choices, each a profound testament to the intelligence, resilience, and enduring spirit of the women who walked the earth when the world was new and wild. Their love stories, unwritten save for the echoes in our bones, were truly stories of survival.